Hey everyone, it's Lane with Tim's Nation. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the team tournament I went to uh, this past weekend in Michigan at the Valkyrie Wargaming Club. I uh, had a great time. I went with, it was myself, it was a five-man team or five-person team. Myself, uh, Josh, uh, John, Benson, and Zach, we all went together. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the team tournament format. Um, for people that are familiar with it, uh, you probably don't need this, but I know I had a few comments where people are asking what the uh, the team tournament format was and how it works. Because I know a lot of people have understood like a, a doubles team event where you and a, a friend put a thousand points of each army together and then play together. Even though it's two separate different armies, you're playing kind of together the same team against two other players playing a thousand points of each army. Um, it's a doubles event, but this is a, a WTC uh, style team event. Uh, so with five players on each team, and the way it works is that we would play against another team. We'd all play separate 2,000 point battles. Uh, what we do is we, when we get paired into each other as a team, there's a, a pairing process where um, each team takes turns putting down an army that they have, and then the other team gives them two armies they can choose from uh, to play against. So the defender gets to choose one of those armies. So it's not totally random pairing. You get some choice as to which armies you get paired into, which armies you're going to play against. Now, what that means is that, first of all, with five players on a team, and the rule is that nobody can have use the same codex more than once, you get more variety of armies um, in the event. And um, the other thing is that uh, a lot of times people can take lists that are not as well suited to single uh, singles play, like an individual tournament play, because you can take something that skews harder into certain aspects because you have some control of the pairing, you can pair into a more favorable opponent. So my Death Guard was built just to be kind of strong and durable and score points and really deal very well with uh, close combat armies because I have multiple fight first units and I have multiple uh, units that reduce damage by one in close combat or neg one to wound, the Death Strat Terminators. Uh, the carnivores fight really well as a counterpunch to close combat armies. So um, that was the idea that I would uh, be able to play into more favorable matchups. It's a lot of fun to do a team tournament. Um, I would not want to be the captain and make decisions when it comes to the pairing because it's a whole process. I probably under explained it, but it's a whole process and a lot of strategy into who gets paired into what are uh, which opponent army, which, which uh, army you put down first. But the great thing is that you go to one of these events with some of your friends, and instead of playing against your friends, you get to play uh, together with your friends, uh, working together towards a common goal. Um, and the nice thing about it, the other thing about these team events is they use differential scoring. So typically on the channel here, you know, we play a game, uh, DJ scores 70 and I score 50, so he's won the game and it's just a win. Uh, if you go to an, a singles tournament, it only, only matters whether you win or lose. Uh, but in the team events, even if you lose a game, you can still contribute points uh, towards your your team's score for that round. So, for example, uh, we play a game, you and I play a game, and you score 70 points and I score 50. So at the end of the game, you are 70 and I have 50. Uh, what they do is you, so at the end of the game, we each get 10 points. And then for every five points you beat me by, you steal one of my points. So if you beat me by 20 points, we take that and divide it by five. That's four. So we both get 10 points at the end of the game, but you steal four from me. So you have 14 and I have six. The idea is that even though I lost the game, I still stay in the fight. Even though I can tell early on in the game, maybe I'm not doing so well, it's still worth it to play through the end and keep fighting hard and trying to play because I still score some points for my team. Um, and so what they do is then they take all five uh, games that are played and kind of add all those scores up and see who has won. So, you know, in one game I lost, but uh, only by a couple points. So he had an 11, I had a nine. Even though I was a loss, it was still contributed nine points to my team's score for that game, uh, for that round. So it makes it a lot of fun because you're never all the way out of a game unless you're losing by 50 points or more, you know, uh, as long as it's less or not. Yeah, less, less, as long as it's less than 50 points, you're still in the game, still score. I did have one where it was an 18-2 where he beat me pretty good. He got 18 points. I only got two. I still contributed two points to my team's score. Uh, overall, my record through the event, I had two wins and um, three losses for my individual games. Like I said, one of my losses wasn't too bad. I still scored a nine versus his 11, so still a good score there. 
Overall, as a team, we ended up with three wins, one loss, and one tie. So we came in second place for the event out of eight play out of eight teams. So very happy with how we performed there. Uh, so thanks for inviting me along, guys. I had a great time. And like I said, it was a lot of fun playing uh, games together with my t uh, my friends rather than against my friends. So uh, a lot of fun there. So I'm going to talk through the games a little bit. Just uh, if you're interested in how that Death Guard army I've been running performed, uh, I'll kind of talk through my games kind of briefly. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, um, but just to give you an idea how it works. And if you do have any other questions about team tournaments, I'm sure I didn't explain it super well. But please go ahead and put a comment in there. I'll try to answer as best I can. Again, I'm not an expert. This is only the second um uh, team style event that I've played in. Um, but at least uh, if you have some questions, I'll be glad to answer them. So, so my games, uh, first game I played against Eric. Uh, he was playing chaos space Marines. And I forget which detachment it was. Um, he had some predators, uh, some uh, legionnaires, uh, some uh, thousand sons, uh, the rubric Marines. Eric is a really good guy. We had a great time. He was a relatively new player. So I was glad to kind of help him and, and coach him through the game. Uh, I've talked before about how I try to make myself as comfortable as possible at tournaments, you know, bringing, bringing some drinks in a cooler and bringing a cart and everything. Uh, this is, is a well-run event, but it's just a very loud event space. So there's a lot of shout out. Both Eric and I, a couple, well, when we went to just to describe our armies to each other and kind of run through each of our armies, we just decided to step outside. <laughs> the door was 15 feet away. So we walked, stepped outside because it was so loud and just had a nice, pleasant conversation outside. So, but I uh, had a great time with Eric. That was uh, a pretty solid win, um, but we had a really good time. In my second game, I played against Brenton. Uh, and this was, um, he was playing Drakari. Uh, I thought I would have a good game of Drakari because my Death Guard with my Fight First and um, my Death Shrouds being really durable and being able to reduce damage on them. Uh, I didn't realize, I didn't look at his list close enough and didn't realize that he was more of a shooting Drakari. Even though he's still in the sky for Splinter Assault, um, he was still more of a shooting Drakari. And I didn't push into him soon enough because I was worried about him hitting me, so I was kind of waiting for him to come out and fight me, but he didn't want to. He didn't charge me until turn four and just did a lot of shooting. And, man, the Drakari with the Archons leading the units and rerolling all hits and wounds still applies to shooting. Uh, still hit me really hard, so it kind of took me by surprise. Good game, but I did lose that one. Um, just got to make sure I really read the list a lot better. <laughs> when I look at Drakari, I never remember which models are which. They're just all a bunch of little... Uh, little elves. I don't know which one does which. I don't know which ones are shooty and which ones are close combat. I imagine the ones with the guns are the shooty ones, but I still didn't pay close enough attention to what he was running. I could have played it a little differently by pushing into him a lot harder because he was more shooting than combat, but um, still a good game there. Third game uh, was against Logan. Uh, I played he it was a mirror match he had death guard i had death guard he had more vehicles and he had morty there and mortarian really messed with my with death, guard, death guard's ability to do things like reduce damage and reduce weapon skill and ballistic skill still his aura of ignoring modifiers doesn't apply to armor save so i could still affect him with the armor reduction uh contagion but a lot of times i'm trying to reduce his damage or like miasma or uh, not miasma yeah Cloud of Flies being able to make me that one to hit just didn't apply. But that was that was an interesting game. We had a, uh, it was really good. Uh, we had Purge the Foe, which is the, the mission where you kill more. Uh, you kill one, you get four points. But if you kill more units than your opponent did uh, in, your, in that battle round, you get an extra um, more uh, primary points. Hold one, hold more, kill one, kill more. So round one, neither of us killed anything. We were just kind of positioning. I had top of turn, so top of turn two, I pulled Bring It Down and Overwhelming Force as my two secondaries. He had a bunch of vehicles mid-table, a couple Rhinos, a couple Fetid Bloat Drones, uh, Predator, kind of all in the middle of the table. So I decided, even though I know it kind of put my army out there and expose them to a pretty hard slab back, I decided to go for it, see how many points we could score and bring it down. So carnivores run up the table, plague marines get out and charge into vehicles, uh, shooting, throwing grenades, tank shocking here and there, doing all this. I ended up with seven unit kills, five of which were vehicles. So in one round, I scored 10 on Bring It Down and five for Overwhelming Force. So a huge 15 point score on secondaries for that turn and seven kills. However, 
he slapped me back and did seven kills to me in that turn as well. So we actually tied on the kill one, kill more count, both with seven kills. Uh, really, really great game. Um, after round three, he decided to do a secret mission. And uh, my thought process, you know, because when someone does a secret mission, it's a secret. You don't know what it is. So I had, I had placed, uh, he had left his deployment zone objective uh, un, unguarded. Uh, I because he's death guard, he could sticky it, so he's con still controlling it. So I deep struck uh, uh, Typhus onto there just to take it from him and to make him bring Mortarium back to deal with Typhus. So I knew uh, he would Mortarium would go over there and kill Typhus, but I knew then that um, that would kind of take Mortarium out of the game. So at the end of turn three, Mortarium is all the way back, still in his deployment zone now because he went back to kill Typhus. So I knew he wasn't going to try and put his warlord on my deployment zone objective. I knew he wasn't going to try to control all three objectives in no man's land because I still had a lot of death shroud terminators on the table. I was still going to control at least one objective through the end of the game. So he wasn't going to be able to do that. And uh, I knew he wasn't going to try to take the one tabling me again. I still had a fair number of units on there. So I guess he was going to try to put one of his battle line units, a unit of plague Marines into my deployment zone. But the only way he scores that is if he kills any of my battle line that I have left on the table. I still had a squad of plague Marines on the table that were kind of maybe 18 inches away from Mortarian. So he decided to do the secret mission. I guess that's what he wanted to do. I guess he didn't realize or didn't see that I had a rhino over by the plague Marines. So I, that very next turn, I moved my plague Marines into the rhino and drove the rhino away as fast as possible from Mortarian to keep him alive. And he immediately realized what, that I guess what he was is trying to do and immediately <laughs> said in a friendly manner, said a few choice words because I had shut down his, his secret mission there. Um, so through the rest of the game, it was still pretty close. He, I had a hard time getting kills in the last two turns, uh, but because I kept my plague Marines away from Mortarian and kept them from getting killed, uh, he was not able to pull off the secret mission. So because of that, I ended up winning the game. If he had not done the secret mission, he would have won the game because he outscored me on primaries the last couple turns there. One turn, I couldn't get a kill, and he just picked up a, a, a rhino with a couple wounds on it and gave him eight points on primary because it was kill more. So secret missions, secret missions are very powerful. But if you can guess what your opponent is trying to do and shut them down on that, it's a huge swing. And that's, uh, like I said, if he had not just, if he had just not chosen to do the secret mission, he would have won the game. Uh, but I pulled that one off. And then uh, next, I played against Orcs. Uh, I played against Rick, really good player. We had a really great time. Uh, the Orcs, again, with the close combat matchup, I think I, I would have some kind of advantage with all my fights first. And, uh, uh, Death Shroud. And the fact is that I was able to nearly table him. I think at the end of the game, he had five Grots and one uh, Luda left on the table. I was able to kill everything else. And I had a bunch of Death Shroud, uh, uh, you know, a few Plague Marines, that sort of thing, um, still on the table. Uh, but I, he was able to score primaries way earlier than me. And he played very well. Uh, he did beat me in that one, but it was a very close game. Now, it would have been a lot further apart. What happened? He was playing very smart. I moved a Rhino out with my Plague Marines in it. Uh, didn't want to get him out because I didn't want him to get shot by Ludas, that sort of thing. However, <laughs> he charged five Storm Boys around and surrounded the Rhino, and it was up against the table edge, so I couldn't get my Plague Marines out. Uh, emergency disembarkation from a vehicle happens, but... You can't do it voluntarily. It's only if the vehicle is destroyed. So uh, the Storm Boy surrounded my Rhino, did a couple damage. Uh, next turn, uh, my uh, the Plague Marines and Shy were able to shoot out and kill the Storm Boys because they were able to use their flamers for the firing deck and the bolters on the on the uh, the Rhino were able to pick up the Storm Boys. Then he charged some Ludas in. They did some shooting and charged in and surround the Rhino again. Still couldn't get my Plague Marines out. Again, hit him with the flamers that were inside the through the firing decks of the rhino, shot the bolters from the rhino, picked up the Ludas. Turn four, I still can't get out because he moves two trucks up, empty trucks with nothing in them, charges them into my rhino uh, so that he's got me blocked in. I 
can. I cannot voluntarily emerge to disembark. The only way I can do that is if the rhino dies. So he charges in the two trucks. There's three wounds left on my rhino. And he charges in, you have to fight. You know, it's not optional. Shooting is optional. You can choose not to shoot, but when you charge in and it's the fight phase, you have to fight. So he fights with the first truck, zero damage done to the rhino. Does the small attacks on the second truck, zero damage done. And the last attack he swings is the wrecking ball in the second truck. So he swings, hits. He swings and wounds me. It's AP zero, but it is D6 damage. There's only three wounds left on my rhino, and I want my rhino to die so that a squad of 12, 10 plague brains and the two characters can get out and do something before the end of the game. Again, this is turn four, and they're still stuck in that rhino. So he gets a wound. I roll the save, and I make the save. I roll a five on my save, so it's not going to destroy the rhino. And he's like, oh, good. So glad you didn't. I'm like, wait a minute. I, I spent a CP to re-roll my save. I remolded my successful armor save into a fail, rolled a one. Uh, one of the few times I was very happy to see a one. And uh, there's three wounds left on my rhino, and he's got to roll D6 damage. So he rolls his D6 and gets a six. So after I had just uh, spent a CP to roll a success into a fail, he tried to do the same thing. He CP rerolled the damage, trying to get lower than a three so that the rhino would not be destroyed. But he rolled a five, and so it destroyed the rhino. Uh, and then all my plague marines got out. And the next turn, those plague marines killed uh, both trucks and a squad of Gretchen. Uh, again, not quite enough for me to win the game, but really brought the scores closer to make it eleven point victory for me to nine point or eleven for him, nine for me. Otherwise, that 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 score would have been much further apart and scored him mo even more points. Uh, so it was it was very it was a, a ton of fun. Rick and I had a great time. It was a total blast. Uh, and it's one of those things when you're playing, sometimes you need to play. Not a lot of people think, oh, you can CP reroll a success into a fail if you want to or try to. Uh, and <laughs> after I did that, he decided to try and follow suit and do it. Didn't quite work out for him. But again, great time. Uh, a fun little story in, in that game. Uh, last game was against World Eaters. Uh, World Eaters are really strong. Again, uh, with my Death Guard, I thought I would be able to, you know, tank some of their their close combat um, with my fights first and my plague marines, but I still didn't have that much experience in playing my death guard, and so he was able to win that game. It, was, it ended up being a 15-5. Uh, it was a good game. Uh, uh, Angron is a beast. I charged three war dogs into him. The first one got him, I did a tank shock and punched him, got him down to five wounds, so he was bracketed, but he still was able to split his attacks and pick up the other two war dogs the other two carnivores just in one, just pff, picked them right up. Um, but it was still, it was still a good game. Learned a lot. Uh, uh, and then, uh, like I said, it was, it was his victory, 15 points for him, five for me. Still very satisfied uh, with the experience. Like I said, if I had more experience playing Death Guard at that level, there were definitely a few decisions I made throughout the game, uh, throughout the tournament that I, I kind of realized in, in, in hindsight that I could have done a little bit better if I had a little more practice, but still had a great time. I uh, appreciate uh, Valkyrie Wargaming and Anna for putting on the event. Uh, they provided food on, day, on both days, lunch on both days. And the lunch was really good. I was really happy with all that. So had a great time. Um, so, yeah, uh, going to give the Death Guard a little break for a little bit and then try a few other things. So this week we're trying out the Imperial Agents. So if you want to follow me over uh, to my Army Breakdown, we'll talk about the Imperial Agents going to be playing for the first time. And uh, I forgot to mention that I do, every time I go to a big event, I trade dice with my opponents. So there should be a picture in here of my dice that I collected from this uh, event. I, I just love this tradition. I love the collection of dice I've picked up because so many times when I'm trading dice with people, they give me something that's really cool. They give me something I've never seen before. So one guy had his own YouTube channel and he had a, a you know, uh, die with his, his YouTube channel logo on. So he gave me one of those. One of them played at the Valkyrie Wargaming Club, so he gave me a die that had the Valkyrie symbol on it for the Wargaming Club. Great. I, I was very happy with the, the, the collection of dice I brought home. So uh, anyways, so let's check out the battle or the uh, the army report for uh, Agents of the Imperium. See how see how these guys do. Uh, the, the shadow of my former Death Watch. And then also, of course, check out the battle report. See how it did. All right. Thanks, guys.